So I'm just out in my yard. Uh, a lot of people forget that you can create your own rainbow if you just turn on a sprinkler. Um, and if the sun is angled the right way, only when you're outdoors, you will get a rainbow. So that's the first question. Why can you not simulate a rainbow indoors? Uh, there's a stipulation. You can create a rainbow indoors, but you need a mirror. You need a mirror to, to do a science test and create a, a rainbow inside. So I beg the question, if you need a mirror indoors, what's providing the mirror when you are outdoors? And I don't know if you see this, but it really doesn't matter. It really does not matter um, about the water, where the mist is, doesn't matter what my position to it is, the curve does not change. It is a fixed hologram in space. Now modern science says what's happening is an optical illusion. It's forming on your eyeball, and I guess in this case they would say it's the camera's sensor. <laughs> but they say that a rainbow is happening on your eyeball, you're having your own unique experience. When you see a rainbow, the person standing next to you won't have the same experience. That's what they claim, because they say each water droplet is creating a prism that is taking the white light and separating it out into all the different colors. I don't think that makes any sense, guys. I think what's actually happening is that each water droplet of the, of the of this 3D field, each water droplet is acting as its own lens. And so this lens is going to be slightly different from this lens, not that each water droplet is projecting its own rainbow. That's totally absurd. So each water droplet is a lens, and it exists on a 2D plane, right? I mean, I can walk right through it. Here, I'll walk right through it. No, I've got my camera. That's a really stupid idea. But um, we've got a 3D field of, of vapor, right? This is 3D going back and forth, but the rainbow only appears on this 2D XY axis. And so the sun is there, and the sunlight is providing one line of sunlight. If it's a 2D line on a 3D spectrum of vapor points, modern science says that there should be thousands or millions of rainbows all along this axis. But there's not. There's just one rainbow on a 2D surface. So that means that one line is converging here and another line is converging somewhere else. There is a mirror when you are outside to create the rainbow. And that mirror is the dome. It's catching sunlight and it's meeting itself to create all the various colors. It collides in the water droplet, serves as a lens, and the slight vari uh, variations of angle creates the colors of the rainbow. A rainbow proves that there's a dome above your head. Have you ever seen a double rainbow? Gets you pretty jazz, doesn't it? Well, imagine the feeling you'd get if you got to witness a double moonbow. 
Take a look. On Sunday, October 16th, the sky over the UK was lit by a hunter's moon, also called a blood moon. Photographer Ben Gwynn headed out to get a shot of the heavenly wonder and ended up getting way more than he had hoped for. Now you might be thinking, Molly, can you tell us what a moonbow is already? You bet I can. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like, a rainbow caused by moonlight. Now we know the moon doesn't produce its own light, so technically moonbows are formed when light from the sun reflects off the moon and refracts off So I'm just out in my yard. Uh, a lot of people forget that you can create your own rainbow if you just turn on a sprinkler. Um, and if the sun is angled the right way, only when you're outdoors, you will get a rainbow. So that's the first question. Why can you not simulate a rainbow indoors? Uh, there's a stipulation. You can create a rainbow indoors, but you need a mirror. You need a mirror to, to do a science test and create a, a rainbow inside. So I beg the question, if you need a mirror indoors, what's providing the mirror when you are outdoors? And I don't know if you see this, but it really doesn't matter. It really does not matter. Um, about the water, where the mist is, doesn't matter what my position to it is. The curve does not change. It is a fixed hologram in space. Now, modern science says what's happening is an optical illusion. It's forming on your eyeball, and I guess in this case they would say it's the camera's sensor. <laughs> but they say that a rainbow is happening on your eyeball, you're having your own unique experience. When you see a rainbow, the person standing next to you won't have the same experience. That's what they claim, because they say each water droplet is creating a prism that is taking the white light and separating it out into all the different colors. I don't think that makes any sense, guys. I think what's actually happening is that each water droplet of the, of the of this 3D field, each water droplet is acting as its own lens. And so this lens is going to be slightly different from this lens, not that each water droplet is projecting its own rainbow. That's totally absurd. So each water droplet is a lens, and it exists on a 2D plane, right? I mean, I can walk right through it. Here, I'll walk right through it. No, I've got my camera. That's a really stupid idea. But um, we've got a 3D field of, of vapor, right? This is 3D going back and forth, but the rainbow only appears on this 2D XY axis. And so the sun is there, and the sunlight is providing one line of sunlight. If it's a 2D line on a 3D spectrum of vapor points, modern science says that there should be thousands or millions of rainbows all along this axis. But there's not. There's just one rainbow on a 2D surface. So that means that one line is converging here and another line is converging somewhere else. There is a mirror when you are outside to create the rainbow. And that mirror is the dome. It's catching sunlight and it's meeting itself to create all the various colors. It collides in the water droplet, serves as a lens, and the slight varying, uh, variations of angle creates the colors of the rainbow. A rainbow proves that there's a dome above your head. 
Have you ever seen a double rainbow? Gets you pretty jazz, doesn't it? Well, imagine the feeling you'd get if you... The very right-hand bottom corner, what do you see, talks about the December solace, and they show the range of the sun over the flat earth. Now, let's take a look with this man, with this camcorder during a cruise around Alaska. Take a look at this footage, and you're going to see night and day at the same time. Uh, you probably wouldn't believe this if we didn't show you. Here's on our balcony. It's about 10 o'clock at night. And it's almost dark. It's amazing. You can see the moon shining and reflecting brilliantly on the water. But then as you pan to the left, it's actually just a little daylight over here. So again, he's showing, he's demonstrating how you get night and day at the same time. So again, understand, imagine if you're a few thousand miles you know, towards this direction, you're not going to even see darkness whatsoever. So when you see, again, the flat earth model, as I demonstrated here, you'll understand exactly how this is accurate. You know, I want to hear people that believe that we live in a spinning ball that's traveling 70,000 miles an hour and somehow satellites and ISS travel along with us in the vacuum of space explain this can't get past the lies of science they've been blinded by science and that's what it's about now let's take a look at this footage of this woman who recorded the same basic exact thing in a cruise in the caribbean take a look there's your moon a little bit darker but again you see how it's completely feasible Again, if you're you know, hundred, a few hundred miles, even, you know, maybe a thousand miles, it's going to be completely illuminated sky. And that's what it's all about. People can't see what's taking place because, again, they have been blinded by science. They've been too far down a path of lies to admit that they've been deceived their entire lives. They can't get past it. No evidence is going to wake them up. Perched on top of us from birth to death are our owners. Our owners. They have us. They control us. They are our masters. Wake up. And they have blinded us to the truth. Birth throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning, and it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere, it's, an, it's oblate, and officially it's an oblate spheroid, that's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way, it's like pear-shaped. I do like it. They tell you all the time what to do, what to think, what to feel. Do you want to be like a cheap? Like all those other people, man? Da, 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 da. Do you understand? That piece of shit up there, I never like him. I never trust her here. This is paradise, I'm telling you. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. The force can have a strong influence on the weak mind. You must unlearn what you have learned. Talking about mockery, just take a look at this company, Orion Telescope Center, located in Cupertino, California. Take a look at their company logo, and what do you see? Basically, the dome with the flat earth. These people know the earth is flat. They are just profiting. Those gullible people that just believe 
all the lies of science. When the foundation is, is a lie, everything else after is a lie as well. Here's a closer look at the storefront. <laughs> right in front of your face. And here's the dome above the flat earth. What a complete joke. Oh my god. Yosemite is a 24-hour park, and it's well illustrated by the numbers of people who are going to go out all night long and take pictures of moon boats. Yosemite is world famous for its waterfalls. A lot of people who come in the summertime are aware that we have all these rainbows at the base of these falls. A lot of people don't realize that we even get rainbows at night in Yosemite. If there's a full moon and the sky is clear, the moon, which is just reflected sunlight, is actually enough light to generate a rainbow at a place like Yosemite Falls. What is so optimistic about a rainbow? You ever been in a thunder shower and it's so oppressive and pounding on you and then it stops? 
and is passed on further away and you look up and there are all these black clouds. And then in front of the black clouds is this brilliant arc of color. Rainbows are often something that we associate with the all clear signal. After the storm passes, here's the rainbows. We're going to be fine. We're going to make it. You know, we survived the storm. But to go to places like Bridalville Fall or the Mist Trail, you get the rainbow without the storm. There are places where you can go, and they're very predictable. Bridalville Fall, Yosemite Fall, Lower and Upper, Vernal Fall, Nevada Fall. I've been to so many waterfalls, there are rainbows in every single one of them. And all you need is a little physics to figure out when to be there. It's just the way light goes into a droplet of water, bounces a couple of times, and then comes back out. Going in, it's refracted a little. Coming out, it's refracted a little. And that spreads white light to all the different colors in the rainbow. When you're on the trails in Yosemite, you'll see folks come around the corner on the Mist Trail or on the Bridalville Falls Trail, and they'll see that rainbow, and this everyone just so excited, they all want to take a picture of it. It's just like, oh wow, rainbow, rainbow, and you know, there's sort of a, a magical property to them. People have been experiencing and photographing the moonbows at Yosemite Falls for years. Even John Muir wrote about these lunar rainbows or spray bows as he called them back in the 1800s. Their colors are as distinct as those of the sun and regularly and obviously banded, though less vivid. Fine specimens may be found any night at the foot of the upper Yosemite Fall glowing gloriously amid the gloomy shadows and thundering waters whenever there is plenty of moonlight and spray. The popularity of moonbows has increased as the popularity of photography has increased. Uh, moonbows have now become a very popular subject for photographers and on the full moon of May or June in Yosemite you can literally find hundreds of photographers up at Lower Yosemite Falls taking photographs of this lunar rainbow. I tend to think of all the people who are up there. For them, that is a wild experience. The feel of the spray, the chill in the air, and the roar of the water, those are things that all add to actually being there. And it's a beautiful thing to see a photograph, but the photograph, it may as well be daylight and somebody painted a few stars you know, in the sky up there. I think a lot of people don't realize that moonbows occur on lots of waterfalls here in Yosemite. You can find moonbows on Cascades Waterfall, Ribbon Falls, Wapama Falls out by Hetch Hetchy, and even Bridalville Fall gets a moonbow at the right time of year. It has its own romantic and beautiful sense to it. It's ethereal. From the night skies and the Milky Way to the full moon rising to these lunar rainbows, the beauty here doesn't end when the sun goes down. You can have a unique experience 24 hours a day in Yosemite.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.